The media doesn't get to tell Generation Z what socialism and capitalism is anymore because these kids are living it and right. that petrifies the left and it should. <laughs> Question of the day, do you think that Jim Carrey is, is A, clinically insane, uh, B, if he is, what does that say about the Hollywood elite surrounding him who agree with his every word as seen on Bill Maher? When it comes to socialism and how Americans are living under Trump right now, I always wonder when I see Jim Carrey saying what he's saying, are, are they just all that out of touch or is it a touch of mental illness perhaps? I'd like to see your comments. Let me know. Here's some context for those who didn't see it on Bill Maher last week. Jim Carrey claims... Uh, that it's time to stop apologizing for being a socialist, <laughs> and it's time to really push it. Here we go. We have to say I'm yes to socialism, to the word and everything. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, we have to stop apologizing. I, I am. Uh, well, here's I what's know. interesting to me. The, the socialism comments went viral on Twitter. Uh, Mar actually cut them. They oh. cut them from uh, the show as far as I understand it, or yeah. YouTube, they cut them. You don't see all of these quotes yeah, everywhere yeah, yeah. on all of the platforms. But we want to give you context of the rest of the interview so you could actually uh, look at Jim Carrey's claims and, and, and take them forth there. So again, yeah. the left wants less context. We want more. Let's go on to the claims. So uh, you know the, the, the Republicans are running with the word socialism. They're trying to they're say... They're trying to scare people. They're scare trying to scare people. It's communism. It's Venezuela, it's Trump says. You're, yeah. We're going to be living in Venezuela. What? <laughs> no, we only we only point to Venezuela because it's the best example. Well, probably of true tro socialism, less millennia, but yeah. mainly because of you. <laughs> you, you're the ones who pointed us to Venezuela. You said everyone look to Venezuela. We were saying, I don't think I don't think you really want to. You really want to? No, 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 no. Come on, look at Venezuela. We said okay, we'll go along the Venezuelan trail with you. You praised it all along <laughs> with its dictator, other familiar uh, socialist faces. By the way, hit the notification bell because subscriptions don't mean anything, and join up at Mug Club. Look, 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 look here's a proof. He is one of the most important forces we've had on this planet. Oh, on my this planet, very American that hasn't aged point well. of, view of my friend, President Chavez. You know, it's funny, sometimes American journalists talk about how bad a country is because people are lining up for food. That's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean by that, uh, Mr. Bernie Sanders? No explanation necessary! <laughs> That's the stupidest. The most important figure on this planet. By the way, Captain Planet doesn't make... Thanos doesn't make that claim. <laughs> they don't make claims about superheroes regarding that kind of importance. So it's not oh the Republicans gosh. scaring people with comparison to Venezuela. The left, they've made these comparisons for a long time. Until Chavez's experiment went completely sour, the country headed for a 1 million percent hyperinflation. People started starving to death with citizens eating rats, dogs, zoo animals to survive. This is what happened. You pointed at Venezuela, you championed its cause, and then it turned around on you, so you move on to the next socialist country. But I grew up in Canada, okay? We have right. socialized medicine. And I am, I'm here to tell you that this oh, bullshit what? line that you get on all of the political shows what? from people <laughs> is that it's a failure. The system is a failure in Canada. Hold it on, is not a failure in Canada. I never waited for anything in my life. Anecdotal. I chose my own doctors. Anecdotal. My mother never paid for a prescription. Anecdotal. It was fantastic. Untrue. Uh. Anecdotal, <laughs> anecdotal, 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 untrue. By the way, wow. what wormhole did I fall into that Jim Carrey gets to act as though he has the moral high ground in combating a biased media? <laughs> Everyone, people, you've never, this is what you never hear. Everyone has heard this. Every, they used Canada as the model and said it was how the United States should model its, its, its uh, health care program. You're just what, Jim, you're just one in a long line of celebrities and politicians who've been selling this lie, specifically Canada, for years. How does it happen that here in Canada, we're back to him, they provide <laughs> quality health care to all people, and I don't think there is any debate that the quality of care here is as good or better yes, than in the United States. I don't believe and there so are ways of providing Lots high of quality health care oh. that you have developed that we need to uh, know more about. You know, in Canada, they run their entire oh, free universal health care system. Is that a total overhead, lens? total bureaucracy, 1.7% <laughs> of the total health care budget. That's a wide blow. <laughs> That's a Walter White in transition if I've ever seen it. <laughs> and by the way, this, this is a lie, okay? Canadian healthcare is objectively worse than the United States. Now, we, we've done some videos on this, so you can go back and look at, uh, just search on this channel, yeah. Socialized Healthcare Canada. But to specifically use his examples, which are anecdotal, uh, they have the worst ER referral wait times uh, 
in 11 developed countries. Wow. 56% of Canadians actually wait longer than four weeks for treatment compared to the U.S. It's about 24%. The average wait to see a specialist in Canada is 21 weeks. At which point you don't need it anymore. My mom was looking at nine months. <laughs> right. for Was it nine months for an MRI? Yep. Nine, nine months for an MRI, but didn't she, wow. didn't she slip some cash? That's Isn't right. that what happened? A little bit of money, system. money, 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 money. And then she got it within about a month. You have cash, you have a doctor. A month? That's how it works in a socialized right. healthcare system. You want to know how long I waited? 45 minutes. Yes, I, it took <laughs> then longer I went and to got do one. the MRI. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. The, here, to give you context, when he says, I didn't have to wait, well, it, it, it was three years when we had to find a family doctor. Well, I never had to pay for a su uh, uh, sub uh, prescription. I said subscription. I don't know. Maybe they don't have to pay for magazines. Who knows? Maybe some guy was going door <laughs> like I got shot in the face. I don't know Depends. what the rules are there. I have to pay for prescriptions. Well, the Canadians have to pay for about 70% of the prescriptions that they want. By the way, they don't have the same kind of generics that you have in the United States. Yeah. Certainly not when I was there. But if none of that convinces you, if you're still convinced by Jim Carrey's anecdotal evidence to which he received thunderous applause, here's something for you. The wait times were so bad in Canada, it was ruled a human rights violation by the Canadian Supreme Court in Shawi versus Quebec to force somebody into the socialized health care system, wow. not allowing them to pay for privatized care. As I've, I've talked about this many times, now in Canada they have these things known as super hospitals, as we know them in the United States, hospitals. Not to mention <laughs> terminal illness survival rates, medical innovation, it's just, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. You know, here he goes on to, again, appeal to emotion. There are people who are sick. But that's the... You shouldn't have to lose your home and because your mother got sick. Only that's not true at all. This is what they do. They try to appeal to emotion. So, no, you yeah. shouldn't have to lose your house because someone gets sick. But Obamacare is one of the greatest taxes in the middle class that we've seen in our lifetime. Huge. Who was left footing the bill? Just like we've talked about with the housing crisis. Not the people who qualified for the subsidies, paid for by the rest of America, and not the super wealthy who could afford the skyrocketing premiums and deductibles, but the middle class Americans who do the subsidizing. Oh, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have to lose your house because you get sick. Well, should you have to lose your house because you actually had the right amount of money saved for money down and you actually got a fair loan, you didn't go to the subprime market, and then you didn't go into the healthcare exchange because you're middle class and you're working? Should you get screwed that way? We only care about the non-contributing zeros amongst us? <laughs> <laughs> Why do they get to dictate how the rest of society lives? Hey, I've never gotten my crap together. I don't work. Yeah. I'm not even legal. More money, please. More money, please. Next clip. <laughs> There's nothing more socialistic than some of the Pentagon programs that right. are just oh. jobs programs. Oh. The Pentagon says we don't want these tanks, and they build them anyway. Course, and that's not socialism. Out. I don't know what is. Fall on a knife. They, this is exactly <laughs> what they did right away. What are they? They sure enough, socialists. What do they go to? Military, war, police. Okay, there's a difference between a commodity and a public good. This is this is really really easy. Police, national defense, they're public goods. Healthcare, college. Nestle tea, commodities, okay? <laughs> let me explain what this means, and let me give you an analogy. Actually, you're the one who taught me this analogy, uh, Papa Crowder. Public goods are non-rivalrous, non-excludable. That means, non-rivalrous, let's start with that, uh, that more people can use them without any significant additional cost. Yeah. Non-excludable means you can't keep the extra people from using that good. So even free enterprise conservatives we all agree the government should provide uh, public, uh, military defense, for example, yeah. a police force, right? Things like free healthcare, free college aren't really public goods because they cost a lot more for each additional patient or person you add to the list and you can easily keep them from using it. This is a referee uh, analogy that was actually given to me by um, you, Papa Crowder, the, the analogy for the legitimate role of government, like a hockey referee, yeah. okay? It's to keep the players, the citizens, safe, right, from both internal and external. Someone might be throwing, you know, a, a, a big gulp into the, they're, they're supposed to try and keep it safe from that. <laughs> or an and octopus not, in hockey. if it's incidental to the play, you keep your whistle in your pocket. We're not soccer. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. That's, a, that's, a, that. that's the role of the government, to keep us safe. Okay, so what falls under the legitimate purview of government? Of course a military. Yeah. Of course things like borders. Of course things like enforcing laws to make sure that other people aren't hurt by law-breaking citizens. Of, we're not saying there's no role to government. We just don't think that everything is a human right. Well, it's the economic equivalent of the free speech argument you make, where these people make their bones, right. and they shut the door behind them. Right. Same thing here. Yeah. So let's go back to the first point. People should apologize for social. Should people apologize for socialism? He's saying, oh, people shouldn't. Have yeah, you should. <laughs> you should. Socialism and its cousin, who's aged slightly less gracefully, communism. They try to they try to separate those two. You really can't if you look at them historically. Has led to insanely brutal regimes under the USSR, Mao, Castro, Chavez. Should I keep going? And all those regimes, by the way, were initially praised by the same leftist elite and academics of America. Yeah. Just like celebrities with Venezuela, you can go back and find the same elites praising Castro yeah. and Soviet Russia, Every Mao. Time. Anita Dunn recently praised Mao. I think it was like 2012. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Somebody does, hasn't done their
homework. I, you know, she, she, I was, I remember I was on a panel with, I think with Doug Schoen on Fox News. Yeah. Well, she wasn't praising Mao, and I'm going, oh, this guy has no idea what's about to happen. And we roll the clip of Anita Dunn praising Mao. Yeah. When it comes Oops. to long-term endorsement, the left has a monopoly on batting a hundred for sucking. Yep. Okay. And by the way, communism. We always talk about religion. Communism has led to a hundred million dead over the last hundred years. Yeah. Wow. Far, far more than we're talking about even just religion. That's a lot of people. That's that, a lot that, of people. That is a lot of people, right? They pointed to right. Russia. <laughs> yeah, right? that didn't work. Then you see what happened. They pointed to Cuba. <laughs> then you saw what happened. Mm. Then they pointed to Venezuela. You just saw them recently pointing to Venezuela. And then when that didn't work, Anita Dunn went back to China. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Let's go to the clip. Let's go back to the clip to wrap this up here. The Democrats need to get a plan to fight this, sla this slander of socialism. You're going to be living in Venezuela. Well, I don't really see be, it I'm yet. We have to say yes to socialism for the oh, word and everything. Oh, dear God. I, we have to stop oh, apologizing. I, I am... Okay, you want to know how I know that Jim Carrey loves capitalism? <laughs> $150 million net worth. Bill oh. Maher at $100 million. Yeah, Whoa. Uh, and if that weren't enough, here's another little tidbit just, just from that very segment on Bill Maher. I went out today and bought me some Nikes. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> 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 he must like really bad quarterbacks. <laughs> some freedom-friendly Nikes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. As a salute to Colin Kaepernick, to Nike, congratulations on right. your fantastic choice. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Colin Kaepernick <laughs> won't salute the flag, but will salute Colin Kaepernick. Nike of all companies, the same Nike famous for exploiting sweatshop labor conditions <laughs> in other countries that we don't allow in our capitalist system in the United States. This just shows you how incoherent <laughs> Jim Carrey's worldview is. It's worse than eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. I know you all try to act like you know what's really going on there. No, you don't. Most of you don't. That's why there's so many fan theories with it in Donnie Darko. Shut up. Stop trying to act like you have a handle on it. You don't. It's just so funny that they use right now, of all times, this is why I, I don't know if he's crazy. He's just completely out of touch. Right now, of all times, to push for socialism. Yeah. Like, did you hear when they were talking about Donald Trump? They said he would rate his, uh, he would rate his job performance as very good. And, and Jim Carrey goes, as what? A demolition man? And everyone claps. Like, yeah. what is he blowing? Uh -huh. What? Our economy is not only the best in the world, it's doing insanely well right now by our own metrics. The jobless rate, lowest point in half a century. That's since the moon landing. <laughs> <laughs> Black unemployment rate, pretty low, uh, all time low. Ever. Ever. And by the way, remember how everyone said that Donald Trump was delusional for suggesting that yeah. he could even achieve 3% growth? I think actually, what's it, the Brian Stelter was saying, oh, is, there, is, there, is, he, uh, is he mentally stable? Well, guess what? Now economic growth is up to 4.2%. <laughs> he was delusional and mentally unstable for promising 3%, 4.2. Mm. Do you have any idea how significant that is in the realm of economic? It's just bizarre to me that they pick right now to bitch about free enterprise and try and push socialism. And here's what I think. The left is petrified of another baby boomer generation. Because why? For enterprise, capitalism is working really well, as we've just pointed yeah. out. We have an entire generation of people, somewhat millennials, but Generation Z, who, who, who had never actually seen capitalist markets doing as well as they have now. For years, the left told them that capitalism was a failure. Socialism was the answer. Up until now, the generations hadn't really seen a free market, right? They had, yeah. uh, Bill, they had George Bush, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, n neither of whom were, they were Republicans, right. no. neither of whom was really all, all that conservative, certainly not economically, followed by eight years of Obama. But now with Trump following Obama, the left is terrified of Carter being followed by Reagan 2.0. Yeah, sure, good. when people were young, right, they thought they wanted Carter, right? Uh, hippie, okay, right, free yeah. love, and uh, Carter, he seems like the nice guy, he he wears stuff. a sweater. <laughs> Mr. Rogers, yeah. turn, like the, turn the White House to down and put some solar panels on, wore a sweater, he keeps a little bit cooler in the winter. He but farms peanuts, what could go wrong? Exactly, <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? And so they thought they wanted Carter. Then Reagan happened, and they realized they had more money in their pocket, and they didn't have to wait in a gas line. So the baby boom generation grew up from pot-smoking hippies into the conservative yuppie stereotype that you see today. Suddenly, generations who were sold on socialism are now seeing the positive and personal effects of free enterprise in their lifetime, M more, so, more importantly, in their own lives. So how, how do I mean? Greater job opportunities yeah. for themselves. Yeah, big time. Keeping more of their own money for themselves. The left knows and is terrified, especially because they appeal purely to selfish motives disguised as compassion. They are terrified of Generation Z after millennials upon whom the left, they've had a, they have footed Generation Z with a massive bill. 
And like the baby boom generation, Generation Z, which is the most conservative generation at this point in their lifetime ever, meaning when at this point in their youth, they're more conservative than baby boomers, they're going to be even more conservative once they get older. Because now they've seen the contrast between a crappy economy under Obama and a flourishing economy under Trump. Up until this Trump boom, the media was able to sell an entire generation on the contrast of terrible, unsuccessful capitalism and compassionate democratic socialism. That's the word we've used, right? But now the generation is living it. They're living the contrast of one of the worst job economies ever for people under 30. Inaccessibility to health care, even if you work for a living, particularly if you work for a living under Barack Obama. Now it's being contrasted with more money left in their paychecks, more jobs available, more free market options available than ever before, whether it's health care, whether it's... It, take your pick, more choices than ever before under President Trump. The media doesn't get to tell Generation Z what socialism and capitalism is anymore, because these these kids are living it, and right. that petrifies the left, and it should.